This week's proverb, thou shall say my name. And thou shall know that this is another episode of Gay Side Stories with Trillificent, all LGBTQA, all the time. You guys know uh, what comes next. Obviously, GaySideStories.com is the hub. Follow on social media, like the Facebook page, email me at GaySideStories at gmail.com. Subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. If I am not somewhere where you listen to podcasts, let me know and I will see what I can do to make that happen. If you get a moment and you like the show and you dig me as a host, do me a favor and go over to iTunes and leave a five star review. Leave a five star rating, whatever floats your boat. And last but not least, please, guys, make sure that you are sharing this show with others Help me get the word out. Help me get these important conversations to more ears. With that all being said, you guys know how this show goes. I likes to have a guest. And this week, I have my friend. You've heard me talk about her on the show. Sexy Lexi. (laughs) It's been a long time coming, you know. We've been talking about doing this for a while. I know, and I'm finally on here, and I'm so excited. Like, I've literally been talking. Finally, it's happened to me. I forget the words. (laughs) Yes, come on. (laughs) That is my song, Do Not Play. Um, It's always the same. Like, always the jam. Um, But no, I'm really excited to be on here. Like, I've always, like, tuned in. Like, when you first started, like, I was so happy. Like, when you first told me you were going to start a podcast. Like, and now to see that you've been, like, committed and dedicated to it. And you're like, what? It's been six months. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. Like, I'm so proud of you. I'm so happy. Like, this is amazing. I'm glad that you're doing this because it's a platform that's definitely needed. And I feel like a lot of times, you know, people are quick to just write off, you know, any brand new podcast because they're like, well, there's a million and one out there. But it's like, yeah, but are they talking about what I want to hear? Are they issues that, you know, I struggle with every day or that I have to face or that I have to deal with. So to see you and to see your baby growing and reaching a whole new audience and people in general is amazing. And I'm so happy to be on here. Like, I'm like over the moon, excited, like I really am. <laughs> you make me cry. <laughs> no, I, like, I genuinely mean that because, like, you definitely held me down, like, kept me motivated. Like, I'm still fun employed, but it's like, you know what? I'm making the best of it, and it's fine. And it's like, I remember, like, you know, us just sharing stories about, like, how hard it is, like, being Listen, unemployed and, like, the ups and the tough. downs, like, it's a blessing in one hand because you're not having to deal with, you know, so much stress. But on the other hand, you got to look at it like life goes on. You have bills that are due every month, and I swear they send you a new bill every two weeks. Like, it's not even a month. It's like, you pay it one like bill. every two days. And then it's like, they send you the next month. As soon as I give them some money, they're like, here's your bill for next month. <laughs> like, it's like, relax. I know I owe you, like, relax. Right. <laughs> relax. Can I enjoy the service that I'm paying for for the month before you start asking me for more money? Man. <laughs> So, yeah, I'm like I'm looking at you, cable bill. Okay, like you know, like yo, my cell phone bill. I don't know what it is. Like I hate paying my cell phone bill. Like all the other ones, I'm like fine, whatever. But my cell phone bill, like I I hate paying that one for some reason. That one and student loans. I'm like <laughs> y'all can die a painful slow death and. I would student loans can kick rocks <laughs> like dead ass like forever but yeah. yeah you said all of that to say that but yes I'm- all of that to say that lovely tangent that we went on yes, I'm so let's excited. get into some of these <laughs> segments yes so first up you guys the school and life uh my school and life for this week has been uh kind of low-key i just been politely dragging Apple in emails with my friend. Uh, we just go back and forth complaining about Apple. So the closer we get to the unveiling of the new iPhone or whatever else they're getting ready to come out with, we start becoming annoyed. And it's like, 
I want to see this on the phone. I want to see that in the phone. I want, what is the new product going to be? Is it going to be something that I like? Are they still behind the curve as far as technology goes? So we just start bickering back and forth like old men, except it's via email. It's like old men of the future. You know, when you feel like, someone or something like a company could do better you know it's, it's hard to to let it go it's just like why won't you do the things that you should do yeah. but what can you do <laughs> so what's your school in life for this week um wow okay my school in life what got is... you from a to b <laughs> um I was having a conversation while we were talking about this before we started recording. Um, I was having a conversation with like two of my closest girlfriends, shout out to Nikita and Carlene, um, about how just like trifling men are. Like I love them so much on one hand, but on the other hand, it's like I want you to drop dead like right now so you can move out my way and not (laughs) bring me anything. You know, we do not advocate murder on gay sex. I mean, no, stories. not at all. Not at all. I'm <laughs> a lover, not a fighter. I'm, you know, I'm speaking in layman terms, but not, you know, like for real. But no, um, my school in life is that I want women and gay men, because, you know, we all are dating men, to know your worth. Like, don't settle. Don't feel like because you're a certain age or, you know, you've reached a certain point in your life that, you know, there isn't love out there for you if that's what you're looking for. Like, we have to go through so much to find our ideal mate. So I just want people across the board to know, like, do not settle for less. Like, if you have standards that you've set for yourself, stick to them. Like, no matter how outlandish they may be, those are the standards that you set for yourself, so stick to them. So that's my school of life. <laughs> so, I think uh, Lexi actually moved on to the Come Quick segment. Oh my god, did I? I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh but god, that's cool. I got we can... See, this is why you that's couldn't cool. vote. <laughs> like, yeah, I was going on and on and on. <laughs> no, but it was it was still a PSA that needed to be heard. So we're just going to parlay into the next thing from the come quick. You heard it in the proverb. It's Destiny's Child's "The Writing on the Wall" album. Um, I'm not sure why I randomly revisited this album this past weekend. But I think I may have seen someone talking about it on Twitter. It's probably a conversation about it on Twitter. And I said, you know what? I have not listened to the original four in quite some time. So I went back and I listened to the album from start to finish uh, two or three times, I believe. I went to the grocery store. I was picking up lentils and shit, <laughs> listening to them, Come through talking about. Woman. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, listen. It's hard out here for a fatty. <laughs> um, but, I, you know, listening to it, I, I have forgotten how solid of an album it was, how much I enjoyed it, how much it really was a showcase of Beyonce and kind of the the start to where she is now. Like you could hear such a vast difference between the first album and the second and the first album. You know, I thought she did pretty well. Mm-hmm, for sure but the first album she was like singing like I'm here to sing mm-hmm. and the second album on the writings on the wall there was something else that she was projecting it wasn't just it was I'm here to entertain I'm here to give you all the bits and pieces and everything that you've been missing versus I'm just singing the songs the best to, to the best of my ability now it's I'm performing the songs starting to mm-hmm. so with that being said, shout out to shout out to them, even Latavia. <laughs> shout out to Missy Elliott for the songs that oh, she wrote and I, produced. Listen. Shout out to Rodney Jerkins. Oh my god. Shout out to everyone. Literally every even, single person. Uh Candy and Tiny, everyone who had something to do with this album. My favorite songs on the album. 
I have a top three because you know I like the majority of the songs on the album. Right. Yeah. But I do have a top three. So my top three are Temptation, which is the song that. Uh, Damn, that was like one of my top three. <laughs> that was that was just a that was such a smooth song. You know what? That was such an insecure song. Yes. When you think about the lyrics and mm-hmm. think about what's going on on Insecure right now. Yep. My second in the top three, and this is in no particular order, is Confessions, and that's the song with uh, Missy Elliott. Yes. <laughs> oh, let me just say, quick side note. Okay. Some of Beyonce's or Destiny's Child's best songs are when they are talking about something that they have done that ain't shit. Right. Mm-hmm. Such as confessions, <laughs> it's like <laughs> my bad, <laughs> my bad. But listen, let me listen. Let me get here's a PowerPoint presentation of all the ways I've had you fucked up. But please don't leave. <laughs> I love that freaking song though. <laughs> and to round out my top three would be "Say My Name." And "Say My Name" is such an iconic bop. It's such a I'm gonna put my foot on your throat if you don't. Yeah. get it to the fuck together it's such an empowering song and it was say my name was one of those songs when i first heard it and this doesn't happen often when i first heard say my name i said oh this is a motherfucking hit mm-hmm. this is a smash and then you know i was sitting there mad for months because say my name was like the fourth single from the fucking album yeah, i was like what are they doing like i was like what the fuck oh man i was, I was like, like i don't want to hear about bugaboo no more i don't want to hear bill bills bills bills, 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 bills no like, more that was one of their like worst singles that they could have went with because i was like who decided to go with bugaboo like honestly i would have picked so good over bugaboo because i loved the fuck out of so good like that? So good is such a Ooh. it's such a glow up song. Yes, it's yes. like I am beyond whatever it is that you have going am, on. Have a good yes. life. Yes, like oh, I am beyond your ashiness, honey, and I am in the <laughs> land of moisture. Okay, like yes, like, yes, indeed. <laughs> um, oh man, I loved that song. Like you, it's funny that we have like two of the same. For our top three, because, like, I love the hell out of Temptation. And Say My Name was just, like, just the intro alone. Like, you already know, it's setting the tone to be, like... You You hear that dog child now, now you're like, oh, shit! (laughs) Hell yeah! You just about to pop the fuck off, okay? Like, you just know they're about to give you some fire. And I was like, when I first heard Say My Name, I was like, wow. Like, what? Like, what? (laughs) <laughs> y'all did that. Like y'all did that all capital letters, okay? Like Yes indeed. Ooh, but like and again, like so temptation, say my name and so good. Like I love so good. I remember like I bought the C D, the full album, and I bought like so good because it was like the B side, I think. To mm-hmm. one of their singles that they had released, I can't remember. And I was like, I just love this song so much. Like I think I played it so much that I ended up like scratching my CD and having to go out and buy another one. But I was like, this song is just amazing. <laughs> yeah, I think it it may have been the Bills, Bills, Bills single. Like, okay, so this is how much I've, I, of a stan I was and gay <laughs> when this came out. Because when this came out, I was, I was in high school, mm-hmm. but I was like in a freshman or a sophomore. Um... And, you know, we were obsessed with Destiny's Shop because these we were like, these girls grew up like right down the street from us or, you know, yeah. they're in the they grew up in the same city. Like we know where they went to school. We know where their house is or was mm-hmm. places that they've lived, et cetera, et cetera. So we were obsessed at my school when this and this when this came out. I remember I got the bills, bills, bills. Um, I think I had it on tape. I don't know what I was doing still with tapes in 1999. But I had it on cassette, and then I got the CD, and then I had the album when it came out. Mm -hmm. So I know all, yeah, I was very, very knowledgeable of the writings on the wall. So, oh, this is my motherfucking shit. Where'd you go? I was, I I have time. 
uh, hey ladies, I'm like, when, when she gets to that bridge, I'm like, let me just listen closely. These are life lessons. Let me absorb. Like, for real, though, they were giving us gems. Like, the, oh, the song that they did with Next, I like that song. Yes. It was a solid, like, the writings on the wall was a solid album. Like, it just, it really was. It flowed together. Like, the intros, that's what I miss, like, on albums. Like, intros and like interludes and skits like they don't do that anymore and it's just like no. or when they do it's too many of them and many, or they are terrible or they just sound forced like right oh man I'm, that puts me in the mind of um one of the interludes from tlc's crazy sexy cool album yes was that one where chili was playing the uh was yes. prank calling people <laughs> Yeah, I, like when do you hear stuff like that? I know it's every here and there, but there was a time when everybody's album had skits. They had their friends. They had their mama. They had other yes, artists. Like, one of my favorite songs, like top ten songs, would have to be. No, I won't say top ten because that's a bit of a stretch. I'll say top twenty easily. Is how is it going down by um, DMX? And that intro mm. is like, and she's like, hello. He's like, who dick you sucking? <laughs> she's like, don't tell me with that bullshit. He's like, nah, yeah. nah, you explain it to me. Z. She's like, exactly. He's like, nah, who dick you sucking? She's like, I ain't fucking with nobody up here, Yonkers, and I ain't been fucking with nobody, Yonkers. <laughs> He's like, stupid ass bitch, you ain't shit. Do I got to holler his name too? She's like, who the fuck is he? He's like, bitch, you fucking him. And then it goes into the song, and I'm just like, yo, this is like amazing. Like, very problematic now that you know i'm older more mature a little bit more woke very problematic because one you shouldn't call somebody asking them whose dick they're sucking at like two in the morning that's really no one's business we're all sex positive we're all adults here so you know whatever but that's easily one of my favorite intros to a song. <laughs> We miss those albums where you told stories. Okay, like you gave even, us an intro and an outro. Who was another? What's another album? Um, Jodeci. What is it? The show, the after party. Oh yeah, he yeah. has some bomb ass like little interludes and intros and skips mm-hmm. and stuff. But you know, so many, so good. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Destiny's Child, the writings on the wall, revisit it and get your life. Yes. So we're going to move into the main topic now. Now, this might be a somewhat of a continuation or maybe a companion conversation to the episode that I did with Jeremy and Candice, where we were talking about allyship. But we're going to move specifically into homophobia. Um, I think we touched on it a little bit during that conversation when we were talking about allyship. We definitely talked about a lot of transphobia and things of that nature, but uh, I was wanting to dig into this topic. Um, And the reason why I wanted to have you on to talk about this is because I wanted to have a cishet woman's point of view on these things as well. And obviously this is a conversation that I will have again in the future because I want to hear the various views on this from various different lenses. So, you know, we can get someone like a cis head man. We can get uh, another person in the community, a gay man, lesbian woman, um, and just really talk about it and try to get to the root of it. Yeah. Things of that nature. So I want to start off with what the official definition of it is. Homophobia is the dislike of negative attitudes towards and or prejudice against homosexual people. And for the sake of this conversation, we're going to say that homophobia relates to both men and women in the community and non-binary. Um, I think broadly the term homophobia is used to include transphobia, but with trans issues becoming more and more prevalent and coming to light, the term transphobia is now, you know, standing on its own. But anyway, yeah. 
I wanted to start off with getting your personal definition of homophobia. If it varies from the definition I, I read and really get your take on what it is. Um, it's pretty on par, like with the definition that you read, but also just adding like, you know, people, you know, spewing hate and, you know, trying to tell someone that, you know, they don't agree with their lifestyle. Like, it's not a lifestyle. Like, I don't understand that whole, that yeah. word anyway, pertaining to someone's sexuality. Like, it's not a lifestyle. Like, so mm. why do you continue to say that? I think that's, you know, what I'm trying to get at. But um, yeah, we'll get into that a little yeah, bit. Yeah, definitely. Later. But it's just, I'm like, I, you know, and having just like a deep hatred, obviously, towards gay and like, lesbians and you know trans people and it's just like it's crazy to me but yeah uh what i would add to the official definition i guess my definition would be that the dislike of negative attitudes towards and prejudice but i i would also add ignorance yes yes because a lot of times just not knowing what something is is enough to cause a prejudice Mm -hmm. Um, so I would definitely add that to the definition and in addition to that I would say homophobia at its core is a chronic case of not minding your own damn business (laughs) being worried about everything and everybody that is not you and yours yeah definitely for sure so in 2017 the year of our lord the year of the way it's looking the year of our (laughs) Fiery day. <laughs> Listen, but we'll keep we'll stay positive. Thank God. But in in the year 2017, why do you think people are still homophobic? People are still ignorant. Like you know, I think it's easier for people to be blissfully ignorant than to accept something that is unknown to them, because I learned over the years that people like something that they can put in a box like you know what I mean like you're black you're white you're straight you're gay you're this Mm -hmm. you're that and it's like but why do I have to why do I have to be that just because you don't necessarily understand like my point of view like don't label me something you know because you don't agree with it or you don't like it and it's like when you sit down and you ask someone who's you know willfully ignorant about anything that isn't necessarily a part of their world they can't even give you like a straight forward answer about it they're just like you know when you ask them well why don't you like gay people well in the bible it says it's a sin it's like well it also says that you know being in the same house with your wife while she's on her period is a sin Eating shellfish is a sin. Having sex before marriage is a sin. Yet, for some reason, that whole scripture, y'all just decided to, like, pick and choose, like, what you're going to use to justify, you know, your hatred towards something that you don't understand, which is stupid to me. But Or don't Exactly. Want to like, there's a lot of people out there that you can explain it to them until you're blue in the face. This is how I am. This is how I was born. And they'll still be like, oh, well, you need to do this or you need to do that. Or you could just mind your business and shut the fuck up. That's always an option. But yet, you know, here we are having to have this discussion. So, (sighs) very complicated. I would say I have a couple of, of points on this. So the first one, and as I've said this before, and I'm sure plenty of other people have said it before. A lot of people are desperate to find something to elevate themselves over others. And I think that sexuality and gender identity are just age old go to's to do that. Anything that people can grasp to say, you know, I'm better than this person, at least I'm not this or, you know, my religion told me to hate this. So that makes me better than you because I'm not it. And I have the religious authority to discriminate against you and and whatnot. 
uh, I also think that people, a lot of times they project this entitled sense of ownership of other people's bodies. A lot of people, when they see other people, especially when they see people that they're, that they may find attractive, or I think maybe just adults, or sometimes people are weird, but they, they want to see what is it over you that I will will bend to my will and for whatever reason people's sexuality a lot of times comes into that and that's another way to say okay well i'm able to to do these things to you because i have that authority you know over your you and your person and the last one is i think that there's just a fear of becoming the minority and being treated the way that they treat minorities. I think a lot of heterosexual people or heterosexually posturing people to get all of the nooks and crannies of that con- uh, convoluted thing there. I think a lot of people are worried that if somehow the quote unquote gay population outnumbers the straight population, then what people think, what people consider a lesbian, which is usually what, like a masculine butch woman, women are scared that those women are going to treat them the way they think that those types of lesbians treat other mm-hmm. lesbians. Men are going to be scared that other men are going to treat them the way that they treat women. So it's another reason that, you know, you have to put your foot down and stamp that out. And I think, you know, people just. You know, the more I think about people, I, sometimes I honestly feel like hate. It it just it, it's natural and it feels good. Mm-hmm. To people. And they have various levels, but hating something, even if you don't understand why you hate it or if you made up some dumb reason for you to hate it, people just have that in them. So, and it just depends on the person what level is going to. Oh be. yeah, definitely. It's like. People, but I think it just they do it because it it feels good or it releases yeah, it something. Like there's a reason, and I feel why. like a lot of people just hate on stuff out of fear, because like you mentioned, like fear of them being treated the same way that they treat, and also fear of like acting on, you know, feelings that they may have had. Like they don't want to be looked at as an outsider to their peers or their family members, and it's like no one should have to live that way you know what I mean like you should be able to like who you like do what you want to do without having to appease these people who aren't even major factors like RuPaul says that his mom always told him if they're not feeding you or providing you with shelter pay them no mind like because how you live your life is how you live your life and I don't understand why people take such a huge issue with you know, gay people. I'm like, damn, what did they do to you? Like, seriously. But that's what I was saying. <laughs> I think that we'll take that. They have an idea in their head of what what it means to be gay and what gay people do. And it's just something that I could say, okay, I'm I'm obsessed with your sexuality because I feel like it makes me better than yeah. you. That you are different. Like... So on uh, on that veining, I want to ask this question: What sex of people, sects, not S E X, but S E? <laughs> what groups of people? <laughs> Trying to be fancy. <laughs> what groups of <laughs> what groups of people have you observed being the most homophobic? Wow, the most homophobic. I mean, I know some people probably like hate me for this or be like oh wow like that's how she feels but I feel like a lot of um older people are homophobic um Mm -hmm. and definitely like southern black people can definitely be homophobic and it's like uh it's wild to me that but that's like another tangent I could go on on another day. But um, Man, <laughs> um, and I feel like 
some young people, like depending on their environment and where they grew up at, they too can be also very, you know, homophobic. And women, you know, some women can be very homophobic, you know, just using the word gay to describe you know, a man that isn't shit. You know, sometimes it's like we have to be yeah. very mindful of what we say. Um because that could be hurting someone's feelings that you 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 just don't know what people are struggling with like every day. So it's like, you know, being mindful of how you speak and what you say. Um but yeah, I feel like older people, but especially older Southern black people, um, and some young people, you know, and even mm-hmm. I'm going to go out on a limb and say, like, even highly educated people can be very homophobic, like, in certain settings, which is weird, but, you know, yeah. yeah. So, basically, you like everybody. Just about, (laughs) except for, like, kids, you know, because, like, kids, they don't, they don't really know, you know, like, they're taught that as well, you know, so it's, like, it's crazy. Yeah. Uh, I would say in my personal experience, the most homophobic, I'm not saying they are, but this is just my personal experience. Pretty much all cis head black oh, men God. Um, are homophobic. For sure. Definitely. As a blanket group. No, it, it, it's, it's true. And the other is kind of similar to what you said. I said his cis head religious black oh my god they're definitely like they can be some of the most homophobic now overall like i just said did you say i feel like everybody's oh definitely and that includes people within the community there are plenty of gay men and women out there that are homophobic as fuck yeah but we'll talk about that (laughs) on another episode because that's a whole different can of worms (laughs) So one thing that I always hear people say about heterosexual, uh, heterosexual homosexuals as a group is that I don't agree with it. Like that's always yeah. the usually the go to is I don't agree with it. I don't agree with it. So my question is, do you really feel that someone's existence can be disagreed with? No. <laughs> like- Hell like, no. no. Like, no. It's, I, I don't understand that. Like, people, and, and again, this is going back to just, like, having that fear of, like, the unknown. That's what I feel like it all boils down to. Like, you know, people uh, hate gay people because, you know, they feel like they might try to convert them or some shit like that. It's just really ignorant. Yeah, it's all kind you of know, it's like stupid, reasons. and it's just like, well, where do you, where do you get this idea like that that is even like going to happen? You know what I mean? So it's like, ugh, people are just people are fucking dumb. Like there is no other way to put it. Like people are stupid. You know, it's I don't agree with that. So I'm gonna talk to you any kind of way, and it's just like. I'm here as a human being. Um, right. Like, I didn't present right, you like, with anything to else. agree or I'm disagree here. with. I said, this, this is, is me. me. I'm a human being. I breathe just like you do. I bleed red just like you do. So what makes you any different or any better than me as a person? Yeah. Like, honestly, it, it's, it just makes no sense to me. Like, it's, it's crazy. I would say to anyone out there, if someone tells you I don't agree with homosexuality or I don't agree with that lifestyle, then you have to remember that no one has the right to say that someone else doesn't deserve to be here, especially not because of who they choose to love or sleep with. Like no one has that right. That's the, you know, and that goes with so many things. No one has the right to tell trans people that they don't belong here. Who are we? To say that someone else's existence, their life, their person mm-hmm. is is not allowed to be here. So, no, I don't agree with that. So if To me, anyone who says I disagree with that, I automatically tune them yeah. out. Like, okay, we don't have anything you have further nothing to discuss. nothing to say. Nothing else to say to me. Now, uh, I just used the word, and you used the word lifestyle. 
and I'm wondering, lifestyle has always been a pet peeve of mine. I talked about this on an earlier episode, but I'm wondering, do people refer to homosexuality as a lifestyle, quote unquote, because it's easier to disagree with than someone's existence? Because usually when they say, I don't agree with it, they're not, they, it is, is the key word. And they're talking about the actual, what they consider the act. Now, when I hear it, the reason why I split this into two things is because when I hear, I don't agree with it. I hear you don't agree with my Mm -hmm. existence, but what the person might actually be saying is I don't agree with the lifestyle. So I wanted to tackle both of those separately. Um, and I think that it's easy to, as as small as the understanding of it is for people who are not within the community, referring to it as a lifestyle is an easier way to encompass yeah, it. Yeah, definitely. Of all the things that they think that they know about it, even though it's a small ignorant, it's usually a small ignorant bubble. But I think referring to it as a lifestyle and and kind of making it tangible to a degree, and it it becomes easier to condemn as an other or as a sin or as abnormal, mm-hmm. and it makes it easier to quantify it as a thing. Yeah, and it's easier to make that distinction between regular and irregular. Mm-hmm. Definitely. I can just say it's your lifestyle and also that way because there's some protection when you say that because when you hear lifestyle and the way that it's framed in conversation usually it will have you thinking I'm only talking about your sex life and your dating life you know your work life and your whatever other things that you're going on I'm cool with all of that but when I say I don't agree with your lifestyle that's an easy way for me to carve that out so it doesn't look like I'm saying I don't like you when usually right. that is the case. Exactly. That's exactly. even if you're friends <laughs> and uh, even when you're friends and your friends like, I don't have a problem with you. You know, I just don't agree with that lifestyle. Yeah. You need to really examine those situations because a lot of times those people, they don't really fuck no. with you. They don't really rock no, with you. Not at all. Unless, you know, unless they're getting something out of the friendship, which is usually, you know what? I'm not even going to get into all of that because I'll be, we'll be on another tangent. <laughs> we'll be to Saturn with all these tangents. Really so it's crazy. It seems like only feminine hypersexual or women are allowed to be gay. Do you agree with that? Um, yeah, I do. You know what? It's funny because I was like looking, um, I was like looking for a tweet, and I came across an old one, and um, I think it had something to do with like the real world, and I think it was like real world Philadelphia when they had like Karamo or Karama. I'm not sure if I'm saying his name right, but he was like the black guy that was gay on there, but he was very like. You know, like, what up, blah, blah, blah. And people were, like, surprised that he was gay. And I was just like, that's interesting to me because it's like, I don't know, like, when people think of a gay man, like, they just think, like, oh, very feminine, you know, dressed as well, that right. kind of stuff. And I'm like... Yeah, that's that was going to be my next You know, question. and I'm like, damn, like, the spectrum's so broad. Like, why is it that you equate you know, being gay with femininity. I don't, does that make sense? Cause I feel like. <laughs> yeah, it does. So uh, I have, uh, I have some points on both of these. So as far as women are concerned, I think at the end of the day, sex sells and sexy mm-hmm. sells. So I would say, I don't agree with, with it the way that I wrote the question because I think that there's two boxes. There's your super hyper sexual lesbian women. And then there's your hyper masculine lesbian women. And, but I will say, I agree that the sexy ones are the ones that are, it seems are more, uh, acceptable to society. Mm -hmm. As far as gay men, I I wondered the same thing that, you know, you kind of snowballed into it. 
that um or sorry I had one more thing to say about the women um I don't know I don't know how much we've talked about uh, if I've if we've talked about it at all on this show ever but and I in addition to that I think that the idea that women and their bodies and their sexuality are for everyone's consumption even other women think that way I think that that adds to the reason why only the sexy ones are considered, you know, socially acceptable. Mm-hmm. And it's, and then, you know, as society does, we toss our, everything that doesn't fit in that box. And I think because more people's in their families, there were more studs and things popping up. So it's starting to change a little bit, but it really felt like for a long time, if you weren't, you know, in a bustier yeah. and stockings and walking in six inch heels and the woman that you were with was the same way, oh no, there's a problem. But if it was that, well, I guess it's okay. But, and you think about like movies and TV shows, anytime you see lesbian women, when it's just regular, schmegler, school teacher and office accountant <laughs> lesbians, people always have something yeah. to say. But if they're like, oh, you know, girls going wild lesbians, oh, then it's like, it's oh, lit. you know, they're hot. Yeah. Right. It, it's lit. <laughs> oh, I know they, they have, you know, it's weird stuff. As far as men, I wondered why that people think that gay men tend to be more flamboyant or feminine and why that the trope was. And the what I came up with is that, and I've seen this uh, talked about on Twitter before. And I'm sure it's been talked about. I'm sure there's whole books about it. But feminine men are the face of homosexuality, I think, because amongst men, only men. I'm only mm-hmm. talking about men. But it's because they're the ones that are ostracized the most and have to fight the most. So they they're on the front line. And that's why people think all men are like this, because the ones that they know of and the ones that they see are feminine because they have to be because they're automatically they're ostracized because they're different because they're a man that's not presenting as masculine. Whereas you have tons of masculine gay men, but because they blend in, so to speak, they're not on those front lines fighting the way feminine men historically have mm-hmm. been. And so now everyone thinks, well, that is what, that's what a gay man is. And so, so to circle back to what you were saying earlier, I think that's why when, people when gay men are more masculine or just Mm -hmm. regular people are surprised so what you were saying about them being surprised on the real world with Karamo because he wasn't a super feminine man that's why because they get into their heads that the only ones that I've ever seen are the feminine ones so they all must Mm -hmm. be like that because that that pocket of knowledge is so limited and so ignorant um you touched a little bit about, and I think we both talked a little bit about religious people. So this last question that I have kind of goes along that line. So what do you think of the phrase, love the sinner, hate the sin, as it's applied to LGBTQ oh my God, people? I think it's so stupid. Like, I, I really do. Like, I cannot stand when people try to use religion to justify their reasons for hatred. I really cannot. Like, I've stopped talking to family members just because of like their beliefs like in religion you know trying to use the bible to justify you know not liking someone and it's like well who are you who are you to judge like you know what i mean like it just uh it uh, it frustrates me i think it's so stupid because it's like if you really study the bible and you have like a true understanding of it you would understand that no sin is greater than the other. Like, if you really delved into it, like, he, God doesn't say, like, oh, well, you being a killer is worse than you being gay. Like, no. Like, Mm -hmm. in he said all sin is sin. Like, he didn't put one above the other. So that's why I don't understand why people are like, oh, well, you know, if you're gay, that's a sin. It's like, okay, but, like, you are having an extramarital affair so are you really in any do you have any room to talk here no like oh i think it's so stupid i'm so sorry that i'm like going on and on and on 
but it's like, oh, it funny. bothers me because like I have so many family members that are kind of like that and you know like when I was younger I'd be like okay like you really don't need to say that but now that I'm older like we definitely like get into it because it's just like how can you stand up here and you know use the word of God like that you claim that you love so much and twist it around just to justify you like not liking someone and I think people need to stop using that because it's not a sin to be gay. It's not a sin to be black. It's not a sin to be anything, you know, like, except for, you know, a murderer or a killer, whatever have you. But it's just like people, oh, they're so fucking dumb. And I know I keep saying that, but it's true. Like, people will use yeah. any type of, any type of literature and we all could have read it and they'll use it to their advantage to try to, you know, and I mean, we've seen it happen throughout history, like how people use the word of God to justify slavery. And it's just like, what? Like, are you, are you serious right now? Like, what? No, like, that's not how this works. It's not how any of this works. And it's just like, <laughs> like, I, I hate when people say that, like, I really it just boils my blood because I'm like, what the fuck are you even talking about? Like, do you know what you're talking about when you say that? No, you're just going off of what you heard so-and-so say last week. So now you want to use it. That's how I feel like when it comes to, yeah. you know, people who try to, like I said, again, the fear of the unknown, like project their fears onto people. It's it's. Like, yeah. ugh. <laughs> I, like, ugh. <laughs> we, can, we can tell you're very, very frustrated right now. Sorry, I didn't mean to take you no, to a place. No, it's just, it's would, fine. Um... Like, I just, I don't understand, you know, how a group of people that has been marginalized for so long turn around and kind of project that same behavior on another group that also has been marginalized you know what i mean like i was yeah it goes back to what i was saying before you know everyone wants to be able to mm -hmm. elevate themselves and i talked about this on another episode i think it may have been the um the allyship episode but you know people's understanding and love and all of that it stops at their intersection yeah. and it doesn't mm -hmm. go any lower so that's why you have black people that hate gay people because it's okay i may be black but at least i'm not gay yeah. so on and so forth um now this topic you know you kind of presented it as religion which it you know we're talking about religion on this question but that's that's a whole different yeah. show <laughs> That is in the it's in the books. I want to get into uh, sexuality versus religion, but I will say this: yeah, because that's, that's a, a whole that's a, a that's series. <laughs> Some tea and crumpets and a blanket <laughs> curl up. Right. Like I could literally talk about that all day, all day. Right. I will say this. For people that hear someone say, I love the sinner, hate the sin, when, when they're talking about people's sexuality, it's trash. And you shouldn't, or let me speak for myself. Okay. I think it's trash. And I don't associate with people who say something like that. I've had people say that to me, and I'm like, well, okay, it was a good, it, well, bye. I won't even say it was good knowing you because you've probably been trash this whole time and I didn't realize until you said this. But be weary of people that will use their religion. Most religions are rooted in love of human kind. And so if someone's, especially when it comes to Christianity, like all, you know, there's a hundred sects of Christianity, but they all have the same root, I believe. And something similar to you love mankind the way that God loves you. Um, and so for someone to take that and twist it and find a way to, to kind of strip your identity from you and give you this bullshit excuse about why, you know, they half accept you, mm -hmm. I think it's trash. 
and you shouldn't shouldn't want to be around people who think that about you because we it's important to remember that you don't need anyone's conditional love right. and that goes for family if it's going to be conditions on it if it's going to be well you know I'm praying that you see the light and go get you some pussy or you know I pray that you meet the quote unquote right mm-hmm. man and then you'll finally you know stop laying with other ladies Right. that's, that's not real love I think that we have to remind ourselves that we deserve better than that. You deserve better than to be Dang, tolerated. Right. Yeah, definitely. Anyone. All right. So that was a pretty good conversation. Uh definitely am going to revisit this because I could literally ask these same questions with someone else and probably get a whole different point of view because it's such a complex topic. Mm-hmm. But for the time being, we're going to take a break and we're going to get into this month's <laughs> edition of That's a Man with special correspondent Songbird. Man. That's a man! <laughs> with me and special correspondent Songbird that you hear laughing in the background. I get tickled every time you say that's a man. <laughs> that's a man! Yes! Yes! So this month we have two more fine ass individuals that you should be familiar with so songbird why don't you tell us who your pick is first so in memoriam of fine ass julio from power yes indeed today i'm gonna talk about mr jr ramirez it's may he so rest in peace may julio may julio to my nigga julio <laughs> <laughs> Man, why they had to cut his neck like that? Man, that was so Bitch. raggedy. They did not did have to do me? him like that. I said, God damn. First of all, I'm not even going to talk about Andre because I can't. I just can't. I'm so sick of him. 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 I don't know what to do with myself. And that's not what we're here. We're here to talk about Julio, but they did not have right. to do him like that. You going to get that yours, was- Andre. But yes, <sighs> Julio, tell us about J.R. Ramirez. J.R. Ramirez is 36 years old. And he fine. is six foot two, and fine, and he is Cuban. Cubano fine. I don't even know what else needs to be said after that. I didn't six realize he was so tall. And Cuban. I don't even. I don't speak a lick of Spanish, but let me just tell you, I would como se llama all over his ass. Listen. <laughs> Donde esta le <laughs> okay. I will find a way to communicate what the hell I needed to Listen, say. Listen, and after he took old girl down uh, in that one episode of Power, I said, "Oh, I have all of the time." Let you know what? Let me set my watch for. The, let me look at. Let me. Mm, you, you know what? I have time. I have time tomorrow. I have time the next day. I was I like, was, "Oh, Julio, oh, this oh, what you do?" Oh, Julio and Bryce and all that shit. Wow! Woo. Woo. Glory, yes, Lord. He was he was having sex with that Asian girl, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. Now they know they could have gave him more sex scenes because he was putting in work. But that's okay. besides the point. I mean, I guess you know he not the star. He was of the being show shady because you know they want to show Tommy's naked pale ass all the time. <laughs> right. And Jamie and freaking Angela, I'm so sick of them. I'm so glad that's over because I don't ever need to see them have right. sex. Again. I want it to stay over. But getting back on track, so <laughs> obviously you guys will know Jr. Ramirez from Power. He played Julio, right. R.I.P. Uh, Rest in peace. Also, he's, he's awesome. been on Arrow. I think yeah. he said. And what else? Arrow. Um, and he played on Tyler Perry's House of Pain. And I was saying earlier that I didn't realize that was the same person because they changed his look so much for power. And on House of Pain, he had hair. But when I Googled him and I saw the picture, I was like, oh, shit, that is him. Okay, And I'm unfamiliar because I don't I don't do Sister Mary Terry, Sister Mary yeah. Tyler Perry. I understand. <laughs> right. So I read recently I, I, that he's <laughs> I read recently he's also going to be on season two of Jessica Jones. Yes, the and Netflix I'm excited series. about that. So I'm ready. I have to. I hope he has a good role, and he's yes, not just. Yes, I want him to be kicking ass. 
Right. I mean, or at least just be present. Like, I hope it's not like, okay, he's on like one or two episodes and that's it. Like, I want him to be throughout this. Like, I want him to be a part of the cast for the season and hopefully not die. Right. Please don't kill him again, Lord. I can't take another funeral for Julio. Like, let him make it through. What if they are an item? Oh, my God. I don't know if I can deal with that. Hmm. We'll see. That would well, be a lot of sex. We gotta that see. That would be a lot oh, of sex. That would be some dope sex too. We yeah. gotta see what happens on the defenders. But anyway, um, what else about Jr. Well, I, what I thought was funny is that he said, but like before his career really kicked off, he used to work as a waiter or a, like a waiter slash bartender. And I was like, yeah, I probably would have just been like, can I get my check? But if Julio came over to my table. I would have been like, oh. I don't know. <laughs> it depends on the length of the hair and it depends on if he smiled. Like, if he smiled, I'd have been like, and he's tall, so I already would have taken notice whether he was looking, you know, a little more uh, Caucasian or a little more right, right. Uh, street. I'd have been right. like, well, he's tall and I like to climb, so what we gonna do? Well, you know, I'm, I'm a reformed hood rat and Come on, reformed. Status ain't hood. I really don't be checking for him, so I probably and have paid him a bit of mind. He's not, not to say that he wasn't handsome with hair, because he really is, but it wouldn't have been, it did nothing for me at all. But that haircut, and them Timberlands, and them dressing him in all them thugged out attire, honey, Mm. fire. Mm -hmm. I have to say so, That's yeah. a he's, he he's not married. He doesn't have any kids, and all he has is a dog. That's two years old. The dog's oh. name is Freddie. Oh, and so okay. Snapped. So we need to be we need to be sliding in DMs because he is unattached. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then be like, now yes. I understand that you need to grow out your hair a little bit for this role, but when you come home, I got some <laughs> clippers for that ass. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take it back down, baby. Let's take it back down. Let's take it down. And then we're going to recreate that scene with that girl. I can't believe he don't have no wife and no kids. Not even a girlfriend. Well, and I was looking. Know. You never Nobody. know. Who so. knows? Maybe he plays for my team secretly. Mm-hmm. One can hope. Maybe he don't like girls. Maybe That's he... what I'm saying. He might play for my team. You yeah. never know. You know how Hollywood is. It's like you know, mm-hmm. it's hard to be out and successful. I and I watch. Shoot. Okay. All right. So uh, my pick for this month is Ron Rico Lee, aka Bay Rico. Now <laughs> you guys may or may not be familiar with this man. He is 40 years old. I'm not sure how tall he is. Maybe average his height, maybe about five eight, five nine. He has an athletic build, great smile, fine as hell. He has <laughs> been fine since like the nineties. So where I first saw Ron Rico Lee was on Sister Sister. He played Tia's boyfriend. Oh he did. And he was fine back then. He was fine back then. So you may know him now. He's on Survivor's Remorse. Uh, yep. He was also on Moesha there was like I think it was like a sex episode I remember he like came out of a room or a bathroom or something and just had a towel wrapped around him and I said oh look I said hold on let me put my goddamn glasses on because I was like that was and I was young at the time because Moesha was a long time ago I had to push pause on the TV I was like wait he was halfway naked on Moesha it was like I could be wrong. Tweet me if I'm wrong, but I I want to say it was one, and this is how you know that I've stand for him for a long time because I don't remember shit, but I remember <laughs> this scene, and he came out of something like a bathroom or a room. I don't even know who he was in the room with, whether or not it was Moesha, but all he had was a towel wrapped around his waist, and I was like, God damn, my teenage gay ass just was in love. Oh my god, he was on Kids Beat. That I'm about to really date myself. So yeah, we are about to because he's. You said he's forty. Yeah, he's forty. Now I just turned forty two, and I remember that fucking show. That was mm. the worst shit ever. <laughs> Y'all Google fucking YouTube Kids Beat and get your life because that was horrible. Mm. And I mean, hard like just imagine white children trying to do hip hop and oh, just keep it. It was bad. 
But he was on that shit too. Yeah, he was also on BET's "Let's Stay Together," which I am unfamiliar with for reasons. But look, the main what you need to take from this is he has been fine for the fuck ever. All yes. right, he's been fine for like twenty, twenty five years. And, and even finer, he don't even he hasn't even aged. Not really. Out of the mustache, but he's looked good for he his has age. He's looked good for a long time. He's on what is it, stars? Looking good as fuck. I'm about to I think the next show I'm gonna binge after the Defenders is Survivor's Remorse. Strictly for him. Yeah, um, he I saw a couple episodes of that and he is hilarious. Like the two the two or three episodes I watched, his character had me dying. So okay, well I have time I for that. Then. You, too. you know, a funny fine man is the way to my heart and bus. Listen, <laughs> indeed, <laughs> because a lot of things. Yes, it does. But when it's coming from a fine face mm, mm-hmm. and body, mm, all I want to say is he could do all of the things to me, and I would have no problem using that lap and that dick like a bicycle seat. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And on that note, you guys, it's gonna wrap up this month's edition of That's a Man. Thank you again, Songbird, for stopping by. And we will see you guys next month. Bye. All right. And we're back, you guys. So let's wrap up this conversation with Sexy Lexi with the queer query. Oh my god. Okay, I'm ready. All right. As a child, what did you want to be when you grew up? Oh, wow. Um, This is so funny. I wanted to be a lawyer slash actress. Like, that was... Oh! This is going to steal my answer. All right. I'm like, I, for some reason, that's all I wanted to do. Like, I was in... Um, I was in theater. Like, I was in plays. I was in Cinderella and sound and music like all that stuff and then I was like you know what I want to help people and I was always very like pro-black when I was young like my parents instilled in me very young like you know love yourself love your people like you know don't let anybody tell you that you're you know less than just because of you know the color of your skin so I was like yeah I want to be a lawyer and I want to help my people but yeah that didn't quite happen so. <laughs> <laughs> well I didn't have all that but I, I wanted to be a lawyer when I was a kid because I fell for that that old oh you're good at you're good at arguing so you, you should be a lawyer you would be a good lawyer I fell for that rhetoric from yeah. that <laughs> and you know then I saw how much schooling goes into oh, man, listen. <laughs> becoming a lawyer and I was off that <laughs> said no thank you <laughs> thanks for playing right. right. that was a lot <laughs> which which famous for no reason celebrity would you like to see have oh, a permanent oh seat oh my god uh, like why why dear god are the Kardashians still a thing okay and so we have the same answer and then after today's debacle <laughs> like kim kardashian was my answer and i, I usually don't even give her too much because I, I she literally is not interesting to me what? none of them are so i don't pay attention but when i was when i saw what was going on on twitter today i said you know what i'm so sick i would like for her to have that permanent yes. seat someone put some super glue in it like literally. sister act two <laughs> and have her direct her to just play <laughs> Have all of the seats and make them permanent. Oh, Thank you very man. much. And like, uh, that whole family. It's that entire family. And I mean literally every single Caitlin, you too. Like your chicken leg ass. <laughs> like don't get me started on her. Like I that mm. whole family is just annoying. Mm. They're First of all, there are a whole bunch of culture vultures. So let's just get that out the way. But it's like the fact that people continue to cape for these people and want to die on the hill for them is beyond me. Like they have proven themselves time and time again to be wildly problematic. It's obviously it's obvious that they have not learned from any of their past mistakes because they continue to make them. And 
what blows my mind about this whole situation is like how Kim was like, you know, I'm gonna give him a chance, you know, because like that's something that happened in his past. Bitch, this little roach looking motherfucker was just on Twitter like what three or four months ago calling makeup by Shayla a roach and a black bitch and all this. Like that's not that long ago. So what the fuck you mean his past? Like literal months. Like, come on. And well, because it's it was just blind caping oh. because, you know, they have a business relationship. I guess, you know, I don't know if they're supposed to be friends, but I know they have some kind of a business relationship as far as makeup goes. So it's, yeah, let me come. No, don't pick on him. Yeah, like. But then she, because she didn't do her Googles, when she got dragged for basically not knowing <laughs> that he was doing all this on Twitter and wherever else he was doing it. I believe she issued like she did some kind of apology video and said something to the effect of she was naive about race and stuff like that. So then she got dragged again because it's the question that everyone was asking, how can you be naive about race when you have a black husband and mixed race children yeah, and see i was yo curtis like for real though get out of my head because i was literally just about to speak on that like i, I mean i didn't yeah I, I just i saw so many tweets that said that or some kind of variation of that it's like you literally are married to a black a man black man that at one point was militant about race yeah. so it's just how can you be naive about it Please cut the fucking shit, man. Okay, thank you so very fucking much. Like, this bitch was like, oh, well, you know, I never thought about race until I had my daughter. And I was like, so all this black dick you've been taking. Right, we know that was a lie. You, you never thought about racism not one time did it cross your mind? Because I know, I know for a fact, if you want to see some of the most demeaning comments ever just go to like any like website and look at the comment section but like really go on like porn sites and look at the comment section and they're just like you know this nigger is putting his black dick in this like white vagina and it's just like all this like <laughs> hatred focused on like first of all that it's a black man having sex with a white woman it's just like you you this never crossed your mind from the very first time because i know Someone has said something to you. Like, this isn't just something that literally just fell in your lap yesterday and you had to deal with it. No, you've been in the spotlight for quite a while. Pretty much all of the partners that we know of have been black men. So, you trying to... You know, when I hear when I hear someone say that, usually, especially women, when I hear like, them say, I, did, I never thought about race until I had my mixed race child... I feel like that's just cold for it doesn't now I need to learn how to do this. Affect me, so now I need, I need to No. Not, not even that. It's not even that deep. I think it's cold for now I need to learn how to do this child's hair. Yes. Because their hair texture is gonna be different from mine. Boy or girl. Mm. They're like, oh you know, I have to find the right barber because it's hair texture. I I think that's what all that means. I never thought about race until, you know, I got knocked up by someone of a different race. And it's like, oh, okay. So now you realize that your baby's hair is going to be different. I think that's all that. That, And also like, um, that's definitely like a major factor because I remember it's so funny that we're having this conversation right now. Cause literally like a month or so ago, I was having this conversation with my best friend about, you know, interracial dating and how a lot of times black men don't realize, like, you're only being fetishized. Like, it's not that these women... Lawrence. Into you. (laughs) We talking to you, Lawrence. (laughs) It's because they have a fetish. And I was telling... And LaMarcus. Okay. (laughs) And I was telling her, I was like, I feel like we as black women, like, some of us we're able to pick up on it more quickly than our male counterparts because like I was you know we were just like sharing stories or whatever and I had like went out on a couple of dates with this white guy but it was like I knew it wasn't going to go far because of like the little comments he would say like he would ask me like oh well you know have you ever you know dated a white guy before or you know have you ever you know played polo or anything like that and I was like (laughs) 
polo. I'm like, first of all, who, what ordinary person plays polo? No one. I was like, now if you would ask me if I play golf, yes, because one of my aunt who works in finance told me that you should learn how to play golf just in case you have to entertain clients. At least, you know, you're well adapted in that situation. But I was like, don't ask me like, you know, stupid stuff like that and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> And so, like I said, I knew it wasn't going to go far, but like I was saying, like a lot of times I feel like our black men don't realize like, yo, she's only with you because you're fulfilling a fantasy. Like she's not going to think about, oh, okay, like when you guys decide to have kids and all that other shit, like, yo, you're going to have to sit down and have this conversation with them. Like, yes, you have a black parent, you have a white parent, but society is going to look at you as being a black person. So this is what you need to do X, Y, and Z. But, you know, whatever. True. <laughs> you know. I don't know how we snowballed into I know. This. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> we are so I'm just, sorry for all the tangents. If you guys can I mean, tell. what happens when you have me on here. But, like, I just feel like just she needs to cut it out. Her and her whole family need to cut it out. Yeah, they just need to. With that I just whole, like, I'm naive, naive about race and all this other stuff and Blah, blah, blah. No. Like, y'all are too old and too grown. Like, I just, I don't believe it. So, whatever. Right. Yeah. Okay, so we agree on that. <laughs> Last question. Um, If you guys couldn't tell, we're both um, John Legend on this episode. So... Last question. What's a phrase an older relative used to always say when you were growing up that stuck with you or that you've incorporated into your adult life? Um, always pussyfooting around. <laughs> <laughs> Lawrence. Like, it's so funny because it's like, as I'm getting older, I'm like, yo, I'm really becoming my mom. Like, like the things that she says, her mannerisms. And I'm like, yo, like, I'm really becoming my mom. This is wild. Like, but like when I was working and, you know, like I would have to email people. I'd be like, I have, you know, like a timeline. Can you send this to me by my time? And they'd be like, oh, okay, sure. Because, you know, like, I was working with people that worked in California, and so I'm on the East Coast. So I'd be like, okay, I need this by 5 o'clock because I'm out the door at 5.30 and not 5.31, not 5.35, like 5.30, I'm out the door. And they would literally, like, send me the email, like, at 5.29 as soon as it's about to turn 5.30. And I'm like, you've been pussyfooting around all day. (laughs) <laughs> like I asked you for this this morning <laughs> and now you just send it to me I'll take care of it tomorrow like I'm not sticking around like mm-hmm. like oh my god but yeah pussy putting around like I use it all okay. the time uh, a phrase that stuck with me was one of my grandmothers used to say gray big old <laughs> everything was gray big old she used to say that about anything that she was overwhelmed by so one particular time, my stepdad, which this was his mother, he made ha- homemade hamburgers and they were huge. Mm-hmm. Like they had to have been like three quarter, uh, damn near a pound oh my. hamburgers. So he gives my grandmother the plate and she goes, mm-hmm. <laughs> great big old meat. <laughs> and me and my brother said, What? <laughs> And she was just like, this is a great big old meat child. (laughs) And so my brother and I, we sat there and we did like, (laughs) we made a whole song to it and everything. But now I find myself saying like, great big old (laughs) about the most random things. And it's usually what I say whenever I see a big dick. So there you go. (laughs) With that being said, I think this wraps up this episode of Gay Side Stories. So, Sexy Lexi, why don't you tell people where they can find you? Um, So, you can find me on Twitter at Sexy Lexi. It's spelled S-E-X-X-I-E, L-E-X-X-I-E. You can also find me on Snapchat. Um, My screen name on there is Capricorn Chanel. And I'm also still working on my website, but soon to come is AlexisChanel.com. So, that's where you can find me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
Speaking of finding things, make sure you guys are finding that playlist, Sounds of the Stories. It's on the SoundCloud page. I believe Chartreuse Disaster is getting ready to update that again. Thank you all for listening. For all of my return listeners, thank you for coming back every week. All of my friends that listen every week. I know that none of you have to and you choose to anyway, so I appreciate you all so much. And for everyone that is sharing the show with other people and getting the word out, retweeting on Twitter, reposting on Instagram, etc., etc., I thank you as well. And as always, you guys, remember, thou shalt protect thy walls. Bye, guys. Bye.